What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to the Locked On Pirates podcast, where I am your host, who does the most, Ethan Smith. Hope you guys are all having a phenomenal Wednesday, November 9th, as Thanksgiving closely approaches, as well as MLB free agency, and the GMs have been meeting over the last couple of days, and it's been reported that Brian Reynolds is once again gaining interest from other general managers, but the Pirates don't want to seem to budge. So we'll get a little bit into that today as well as Matt Gorski winning some minor league awards and possibly being a future asset at the first base position with the power that he brings from the minor leagues and just how busy are the Pirates going to be in free agency this year? It's one of the pressing questions we have every single year about this team. Are they going to be active in free agency? A CBS sports article thinks uh, seems to think so. I will give you my thoughts on that as well. Of course, thank you for listening to the Locked on Pirates podcast, as you do all the time on whatever service you find it on Apple Podcasts, Google you know, YouTube, where you can come see my beautiful face, Spotify, Odyssey, and wherever you get your podcasts. Today's episode is brought to you by Simply Safe. We're going to talk about them a little bit here shortly. But with that said, guys, let's get into today's episode, everybody. You are Locked On Pirates, your daily Pittsburgh Pirates podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back to that Pirates podcast, everybody. I am once again your host who does the most, Ethan Smith. You can follow me on Twitter at MVP underscore Ethan or at Locked on Pirates for all of your coverage of the Pittsburgh Pirates, the minor leagues and baseball news. Welcome back. As always, thank you for tuning into this podcast. And on today's episode, it's happening again. Uh, Rival GMs are interested in Brian Reynolds and his services. The Pirates, though, according to a report, which I will flash here on the screen and read for everybody on audio from John Morassi, says Pirates all-star outfielder Brian Reynolds is a popular name among GMs this week, as he was last year, but he is unlikely to be dealt this offseason. The Pirates believe they will be competitive before he hits free agency after the 2025 season. So that's very interesting that despite the interest, the Pirates are once again saying no. This is the second year in a row. Of course, last year you had Brian Reynolds be an all-star, Silver Slugger finalist, Gold Glove finalist, everything that he could have done last year. It was his best year of work at the major league level. This year, not so much. He didn't have that kind of year. He wasn't an all-star. He wasn't a Gold Glove candidate. He didn't hit 300. But he was still a very good player down the stretch. He picked it up near the end of the year after struggling mightily at the beginning of the year. And he's been a popular name since he made the All-Star game. Even before that, he was a popular name in trade talks because the Pirates in 2021 were just not a very good team. And at the time, I was kind of torn on it because I did say that that was the time to trade him. That was when his value was the highest. This is when this team was still obviously in the rebuilding stage that they still are and that they still needed to accumulate as many assets as possible, especially when the assets they would have gotten back at the time in 2021 at the trade deadline would have been far, far more valuable than they would be at this current juncture. I say that, though, not assuming what the GMs that are interested in Reynolds are offering Ben Sherrington and are offering the Pittsburgh Pirates. I'm not really sure because Reynolds, again, had a down year, but it's not like he had a bad year. I mean, he hit a lot of home runs. He was still very good defensively. He still had a very good OPS. He brought his average up from what it was really bad at the beginning of the year to, I believe, around the 260 range. I don't remember right off the top of my head. But Brian Reynolds is that kind of player that, to me, on a contending team right now, could either be the missing piece or your next star. It really depends. But I want to flash this again on the screen for everybody. It's not the fact that he's a popular name among GMs again. 
that's something that I've become desensitized to. It's something that I'm used to as a Pirates fan. And I'm sure everybody listening to this podcast is also probably used to as a Pirates fan. It's just something that we get accustomed to hearing our best players be involved in trade rumors. The interesting thing from this, from Marassi, now that Passin, Rosenzall, Nightingale, nobody else said anything about this from what I know, was that the Pirates believe they will be competitive before he hits free agency after the 2025 season. Meaning going into 2023, if that is true, now I'm not saying this is what the Pirates are saying, this is what John Marassi is saying. If you are saying you are going to be competitive before he hits free agency after the 2025 season, that that that's a loaded a loaded bag because of course Pirates fans, us Pirate fans want us to extend him. It's something we've wanted for a very long time. They did buy out his arbitration years, but they didn't fully extend him. This sounds like they're going to ride it out with him. And then let him do his thing post thirty year or post age thirty when he hits free agency. Not a bad strategy, but if Reynolds doesn't slow down, the Pirates put themselves in kind of a weird spot here because then they'll be competitive. I mean, I agree with this sentiment. They will be competitive before twenty twenty five. You look at the prospects they have coming up. You look at the idea that they're going to probably be somewhat busy in free agency. What we're going to get into later. When you look at this, though, this puts the Pirates in a weird spot because your competitive, say, say the competitive window opens in 2024. So then that means your competitive window is 2024 to 2025. So you get two years of this thing. By then, if you don't extend Reynolds and he is still playing at the level that we know him to play at, He's going to be too expensive for you. He's going to ask for like $120 million over five or six years if he's playing the way he knows how to play and is playing at this current juncture. That's why I think us Pirates fans, including myself, stress this so much that the Pirates need to extend him now. Because he's going to be expensive either way. I mean, you're going to look in the realm of 80 million, 90 million probably for Reynolds anyways. Maybe maybe you lowball him a little bit. But if you wait until then, and then you're in the middle of a competitive window, based off of what that report says, where they're saying, we don't want to trade him because we're going to be competitive before he leaves. Why would you let him leave in the middle of your competitive window. That's where this gets a little weird. Now, of course, by 2025, anything could happen in terms of who the outfielding prospects will be. I mean, you're going to have Lonnie White Jr. at your disposal. You're possibly talking about Shaylin Polanco at that point. There's a lot to gauge there, but that's two and a half years down the road right now. But if the Pirates are saying our competitive window, and I'll pull it up for a third time so you can see what he said, the Pirates believe they will be competitive before he hits free agency after the 2025 year. So if you even go into this year saying you're going to be competitive, that gives you three years. That goes back to 2013 through 2015. That gives you three years. Wouldn't you want to extend your guy who's pretty much your best player? That, that, it's a little puzzling. Now, again, that's just a report. The Pirates have said nothing about that. They have said nothing about wanting to, like, keeping them through the competitive window. They've said nothing about extending Brian Reynolds. They've said nothing on that front. Is it something that could be explored this offseason? 100%. Just like I think they should and probably will explore an O'Neill Cruz extension. I would also find it fruitful. For them to explore it with a guy who we talked about yesterday, Mitch Keller, who's on his first year of arbitration now, I would find it fruitful for them to talk to him about an extension. 
There's a lot of stuff going on around with the Pirates right now. And if they get active in free agency, 2023 could be a pretty fun year. And I think it's safe to say that the Pirates are going to eventually be in a contention window between now and 2025. We just don't know when that contention window starts, and we don't know how long that contention window is going to last. Speaking of safe and windows, today's episode is brought to you by Simply Safe. If you thought about securing your home with home security, but you've been putting it off, you'll want to listen up. Right now, Locked On Pirates listeners can order the number one rated Simply Safe home security system for 50% off. This is their biggest offer of the year, and you won't want to miss it. Here's why I love it. Did you know that over the holidays, property crimes like burglaries and package theft spike nationally? That's why our friends at Simply Safe Home Security are offering 50% off of their award winning security system so that more families can feel safe and secure this holiday season and order your Simply Safe system for half off today and enjoy advanced security and greater peace of mind this holiday season. Simply Safe, of course, is an awesome, awesome awesome thing to have. It was named the best home security system of 2022 by U.S. News and World Report a third year in a row. In an emergency, 24-7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real so you can get priority police response. Simply Safe is whole home security with advanced sensors for every room, window, and door. HD security cameras for inside and out, smarter ways to detect motion that alert you only when a threat is real, and even hazard sensors that detect fires, floods, and other threats to your home. 24-7 professional monitoring service costs less than $1 per day, less than half the price of ADT's traditional, professionally installed system. With the top-rated Simply Safe app, stay in complete control of your system anytime, anywhere. Arm or disarm, unlock for a guest, access your cameras, or adjust system settings. Don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system I recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB today. This is your biggest discount of the year, so don't wait. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Also, make sure, thank you, by the way, for making Locked on Pirates your first listen of the day here on Wednesday, November 9th. But make sure you make a Locked on Sports Today your second listen of the day here on the Locked on Podcast Network, where you can find all the news you need to find, of course, about anything going on in the world of sports from football, basketball, baseball, hockey, golf, UFC, boxing, whatever you can think of. It is on Locked on Sports Today. So now we're going to get into a guy who I've mentioned on this podcast a couple of times. Haven't really talked about him too much, but he low-key had a pretty good year at the minor league level this year. Excuse me. And he also won the Willie Stargell Slugger of the Year Award. And that's Matt Gorski. Uh, by the way, first batch of winners in the minor league awards, which are getting given out this week by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, the Kent Colby reliever of the year went to Tyler Semen. Semon- I can't say his last name. Semen- <laughs> I was. You guys know. You saw it from Jason Mackey. The uh, Bill Mazeroski defender of the year is Jared Triolo. And the <coughs> excuse me. Let's take a sip of water on that one. And the Omar Moreno base runner of the year. Goes to Su Che Chang. If I uh, butchered some of those names, I do apologize. But going back to Matt Gorski for a second, the biggest, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, needs for the Pittsburgh Pirates in free agency this year has to be the first base position. And you're looking at it in the terms of they need to solidify that position. I think the middle infield is solidified. You look at Rodolfo Castro, Kevin Newman, O'Neill Cruz, Tucapito Marcano. They have plenty of options there. Even if injuries happen, they will have options there. You already signed your third baseman to his uh, eight-year, $70 million contract. He's fine. You have Brian Reynolds in the outfield with a plethora of young guys in the outfield on the way. First base and catcher right now are really the two positions, and pitching, obviously, are really the two positions that 
the Pirates have the biggest struggles at at this current moment. Matt Gorski is a guy who could possibly help with this. Now, there are going to be a lot of young options the Pirates can choose from at first base. You have Matt Gorski. You're going to have Malcolm Nunez, who was picked up in the Jose Quintana trade. You're going to have Mason Martin, possibly, at some point. If they decide to hold on to Ben Gamble, I've heard there's options that he might go there. I hate that idea, but it's something that might be thrown out there. But you're also going to probably pick up a free agent option. And on tomorrow's episode, Free agency does open. I will be making my official Pirates free agency predictions as well as free agency predictions for the biggest free agents around baseball. With Matt Gorski, though, here's his uh, MILB reference page, of course, from MLB.com. Let's not forget that Matt Gorski was a former second-round pick, first of all. 57th overall pick in the draft. Just a little bit older than me. Also, happy early birthday, Matt Gorski, December 22nd. You look at the guy overall, and of course, those were his 2022 stats and his career stats. Career, 243 guy with 44 home runs and 144 RBIs. But in 2022, 24 of those 44 home runs and 66 of those 144 RBIs came this year, along with 21 stolen bases, a 280 average with a 358 on base percentage and a 956 OPS. Mainly at um, Altoona, may I add. He did get a call up to Indianapolis a little bit later in the year, near August, September. But you look at the frame of Matt Gorski. Six foot four, 198. He's 24 years old. He's a right handed hitter. He has, he's listed as a center fielder, but he does have a little bit of experience playing the first base position. If you can bring up a guy like Matt Gorski as a right handed power bat to supplement your first base spot, and he comes up, and I'm not asking him to do 24, 66, 21. I'm not asking him to have a 2020 season right off the rip at the major league level. But Matt Gorski, man, is not a guy I think Pirates fans really expected to have this kind of year. But did we also expect Andy Rodriguez to have the kind of year that he had? No. Really, when it came to first base at the beginning of 2022, myself included, most people looked at it as the Mason Martin show. Now it might be the Matt Gorski and Malcolm Nunez show. And I'm sure we will see Matt Gorski at some point in 2023, possibly very early, depending on what the Pirates decide to do at the first base position in free agency. Because if they have a void at that position going into the year, They're going to have to pick somebody to play that position. And I hope that they don't put themselves in that spot. But it wouldn't surprise me if they do. And again, primarily an outfielder. That kind of gets into the train of thought of, okay, where do you put them? Do you put them in the outfield? Do you put them at first base? What's the bigger need for you? Obviously, I think it's first base. If he could play the first base position well defensively and also hit like that, put him at first base. But I wouldn't be against him staying in the outfield either. They do have a lot of options to pick from there. You have Matt Frazier, who's going to probably come up next year if he is protected from the Rule 5 draft. You have Matt Gorski. You have Kenneth Smith and Jigba, who's coming back from injury. You have Cal Mitchell, Jack Sawinski, Connor Scott. You have a lot of these guys that are going to be available at your disposal in 2023 in the outfield alongside Brian Reynolds, that sliding Gorski over there might not be the worst idea because of the fact that you need something there. It's it's ever since Josh Bell has left, that position has been a mess. I mean, Colin Moran was a likable guy because they called him Redbeard and were the Pittsburgh Pirates, and he hit the occasional moonshot every once in a while. He wasn't getting it done. 
Yoshi Tsutsugo wasn't getting it done. Todd Frazier obviously didn't get it done. Josh Van Meter wasn't getting it done. Michael Chavis showed a lot of energy over there at that position, but he wasn't really getting it done with the bat. Miguel Andujar, possibly. Who knows? Maybe he slots over there. It, it, it's a position of need that the Pirates desperately need. I'm not saying like, oh, it's just a position of need. They could touch it up with a prospect or something. They will eventually. But going into the year, you cannot go into the year with the first base position looking the way it does at this current moment that I am speaking. You cannot. You cannot have that happen again. Same thing with the catcher position. Same thing with the bullpen. You cannot have that happen again. Audio. You are going to hear a couple of ads real quick. YouTube, stay right here. We are going to be right back. And welcome back to the Locked On Pirates podcast, everybody. It is the final segment of today's episode where we're going to talk about if the Pirates are going to get busy. You know, shake that thing, get busy. Yeah, hopefully I don't get trademarked there, but pretty good song. But again, make sure you go check out Locked On Sports Today with Peter Bukowski. He's covering everything you need to know about everything in the world of sports every single day. So make sure you go check that out. And for a Pittsburgh Pirates team that in 2022, we all remember early in the year that this team had a lot of promise. It was looking like a very good, young, energetic team. I wouldn't say, actually, I wouldn't say good. It was looking like a young, energetic team that was going to be somewhat competitive in games, somewhat not competitive in others. Then, of course, they bring back the veterans, Ben Gamble, Yoshi Tsutsugo, Josh Van Meter. They bring back these guys, and it just felt like the energy in the place went poof. Going into 2022, into this offseason, going into 2023, This is now, I would consider this because it's hard because 2016 through 2019 weren't really rebuilding years. Uh, The Pirates were still trying. They were kind of trying to reload from the 2013 through 2015 run, and it just never worked. This is year four going almost on year five of rebuilding. Now, of course, Neil Huntington, Clint Hurdle, all that happened. So that kind of shifted things back a couple years. But we're going into year three of Ben Charrington now. And I don't think anybody would doubt it that Ben Charrington has had some good moves, some good decisions while he's been here. He's also had some questionable ones. He was integral in bringing in Tyler Anderson and Jose Quintana. He was also integral in the fact that Yoshi Tsutsugo and Josh Van Meter were on this team for way too long. When you look at it with a grain of salt, I don't think anybody's screaming World Series 2023 Pirates. I don't think that's happening at all. But what I see from a lot of fans, what I see from a lot of people in general who root for the Pirates and beat writers is that the Pirates may get a little bit busy in free agency. And they need to. Now, when I say they need to get busy in free agency, you've heard me discredit the fact of going to go get an outfielder because of the options that you have to get looks at. Now, if they go get a quality outfielder in free agency, I'm not going to be mad. But I will justify it on this podcast and say, okay, this guy's going to be blocking so-and-so, so get ready for that when you're wondering why Connor Scott or Matt Gorski isn't up here. But they have to go get a first baseman of some sort. We're going to talk about this more tomorrow, about who I think they're going to target at that position. They have to go get another arm. Rowanzi Contreras, Mitch Keller, and JT Brubaker can only do so much. You can't rely on those three so much. You can only rely on them so much right now. And God help me. (laughs) They need bullpen help. For two years in a row, two years in a row, we saw this bullpen be one of the best bullpens in baseball to kick off the year through the first month or so. 
Then it just slowly declines and slowly declined and slowly declined even worse. It just got worse and worse and worse. Right now in that bullpen, you're looking at Will Crow. You look at Chase DeYoung. You look at Robert Stevenson, Dwayne Underwood Jr., David Bednar. There's options there. Yuri De Los Santos. There's options. Get more. <laughs> That's one thing with this coaching staff that I think should be the biggest gripe with people, as I know a lot of people talk about Andy Haynes and his hitting stuff and Derek Shelton and his decisions not to let starters go deep in games. Bullpen mismanagement has probably been the most infuriating thing for me to watch with this team over the last two years. And a large part of that is a reliever in the regular season has no business pitching three innings. And again, the coaching staff can't be to blame for this, but when your options are limited at that position, I don't blame you. That's why I think they need to prioritize going to go get relief pitching. Go get another starting pitcher. Help these young pitchers. Help them. Go get another catcher behind Roberto Perez if he comes back. If he doesn't come back, you need a catcher again. We cannot go into the season with Tyler Heineman as the starting catcher. It can't happen. The Pirates have been mediocre for too long. They need to go out in free agency. They need to get busy in free agency, and they need to make this team better at the major league level going into 2023. Personally, do I think they're going to get busy? Yes, I do. Now, get busy to me might be different from what you guys think. I would expect at minimum, three free agent signings at the major league level will be brought into this team this year. Maybe four. Do you also see a trade this offseason? Probably. Because I do think it's put up or shut up time for this front office. I think they have to show us something in 2023. You got to show us something. This team cannot be a 100-loss team again in 2023, or a lot of people, including myself, are going to give up on this front office really quick. But with that said, we're going to get more into that tomorrow. Free agency prediction show tomorrow coming at you here on the Locked On Pirates podcast. I am, of course, your host who does the most, Ethan Smith. As mentioned earlier, go follow me on Twitter at MVP underscore Ethan or at Locked On Pirates for all of your coverage of the Pittsburgh Pirates, the minor leagues, and baseball news. While we re end this episode again, go check out Locked On Sports today. They are absolutely awesome. Go check that out for all of your news about everything you need to know in the world of sports. Go check out Christopher Carter over at Locked On Steelers. He did an awesome show with Arthur Moats yesterday, so go check that out. Go check out Hunter Hodes over at Locked On Penguins. He's been covering the recent Penguins slide and how they can get out of it. And go check out Nick Farbov, Locked On Pit. He's been doing great things over there as well. We are a strong 412 here at the Locked On Pirates Podcast Pittsburgh Network what I like to call it. But with that said, guys, thank you so much for tuning in today on Wednesday, November 9th. Have a wonderful rest of your hump day, and I will see you on the flip side.